afternoon everybody i i hope that you're all fine and everything is fine at your end so just to make sure that we don't have the issue that sometimes we face please write in the chat box if you are hearing my voice without any echo and the audio and video all is fine please write in the chat box for me Hello, Yunchi. So is video or audio? Audio is fine. Your yeah, video? <laughs> video, you have to bear with it. I can't do much with it. Because of the lockdown. Yeah, I do understand. Mm, so we had a long holiday, but actually we couldn't do much here as well. Yeah, for me, it's almost maybe three months, maybe more, that I've been staying at home. We are going anywhere. Yeah, that's the new life. Mm, so we don't have any options, so we better accept the way it is. Okay, anything about our module before we start the topic and we go to or lectures or anything you want to discuss about. So no point. Shall I start the topic? Okay, for today's topic is about money supply process. You have a study about money supply, I think that in your macro. And if you remember, once we wanted to draw a money supply curve, we used to draw one vertical line like this right and we were saying that we assume that this is the central bank who is issuing the bond and since the amount of the money supply is in control of the central bank so that's why we assume that the other external factors they have no impact on the central on the central bank decision or the amount of the money supply so that's why we draw the money supply as a vertical line that um, it is independent of any other factors today i want to show you that apart from that part of the money supply which is in control of the central bank which is normally in the notes and the coins that we use in our daily life if you remember previously we named them as m1 so apart from m1 I want to show you that there is another part of the money supply in which the banking situation are playing a very important role. So today I want to show you that once we are talking about the increase in money supply, apart from open market operation that we discussed during the macro time, I want to show you that we have another kind of operation which is increasing the money supply but it is not dealing with open market operation anymore and it is not in control of the central bank anymore the banking system have more, have more control over it so this is the overall topic for today so uh, i have uh, recorded some videos so i'm going to share some videos and some part of it i have to interject and i'm going to explain more about it so let's um Let's start with our slides. So this is the last part of the slide. Yeah. Okay. So the first part of the slide is about explanation on M1 and M2 that previously we had. Then, um, okay, we want to, okay, today we start with the players in a money supply process. So normally the three main players, of course, the first is the Federal Reserve, uh, oh, sorry, the Central Bank, 
So in this topic for simplicity, whenever we want to talk about the central bank, normally we say Fed. It's only because of the simplicity. It is we assume that the Fed is a representative of the central bank of different countries. Then we have another main important player, which is the banking situation, or we can say that there are financial intermediaries. And the last main players are, is us, all of us. So it means that we can play the role of the depositor, and at the same time, we can play the role of borrowers. So now we want to explain that how our borrowing or our depositing is creating, is impacting on the money supply, and then how the different components of money supply are affecting the Federal Reserve balance sheet. Once we talk about the balance sheet, if you remember from your accountant intro, introduction to accountancy, something like this, I assume that you have done in your modules. So you are familiar with the concept of asset and liabilities in the T account. So now in this module, we want to introduce that what are the asset and liability component of central bank, asset and liability component of the banking system, and how this asset and, asset and liability of these two main institutions are contributing to the money supply. So let's watch the first video. Our, Our today's today topic, topic is, is about, about money, money supply, supply processes. Um, we, we know that, that normally, normally any, any change in money, money supply is happening through the central, central bank, bank in, in every, every country. country. There, there are, are three main, main players, players in, in the money supply, supply processes. Process. Of, course, of course, the, the most important players, players is the central bank. bank. After, After that, that is, is the banking or financial, financial institution. institution. And, and, and the third, third player, player is, is the depositors. Uh, uh, so, so today, today we, we want, want to know more about um, money supply, supply processes. processes. It, it means that, that if the central bank, bank is performing any monetary, monetary policy, policy or tight, tight monetary, monetary policy, policy, how it is, is going, going to affect, affect the balance sheet of, of the central bank. bank. So, so talking, talking about, about the balance sheet, sheet we, have we have to explain, explain about, about the two components, components of the balance, balance sheet, sheet which, which are the liability, and, and the assets, assets which, which is, is the, the two compulsory component, component of, of every balance, balance sheet. sheet. Talking, Talking about, about the liabilities, liabilities, the liabilities of the central bank, bank are categorized into two, two, two parts. parts. The, first the first is the currency in circulation, and the, and the second is, is reserve. reserve. Currency, currency in circulation, circulation is the, the note, note that, that we are holding and, and it's, it's the exchange medium of exchange, exchange for us. So, so we, we can, can buy the products with the notes, notes and, and coins that they are holding. These, These are, are the currency, the currency in circulation and, and do, do remember that, that it is the liability of your central bank. bank. Why, Why it is liability? Because, because of the simple reason that, that once you are holding a note, if you refer to the central bank and you ask, to exchange, to exchange for the note, the central bank has the obligation to change this note for you. For, for example, example, if you are if holding 100 US dollars and you want to change it, it you, you want to make, make it into a smaller piece like having $250, or, or you, you want to have even a smaller part like $520, the responsibility or liability of the central bank to do that for you. Apart from the currency in circulation, we have, we have another, another type, type of, of the liability, liability which is the reserve. Reserve, reserve are actually are are two, two parts. parts. The, the reserve means that, that according, according to the deposit, deposit uh, uh, which is deposited at the central bank, bank or, or the, 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 the physical deposits at the, the banking system are holding. So it, so it means, means that in other words, words uh, we, we can, can divide, divide the reserve itself into two, two parts. parts. The required reserve and the excess reserve. Required reserve are the amounts and that has been dictated by the central bank to the banking system that they have to keep a particular percentage of the deposit that they are receiving from the depositors. So it, so it means, means that, for example, normally this percentage, we assume that, that it is 10%, it can, percent, it can be higher or it can be lower based on the policies of the central bank. 
So, so if, if the bank, bank is receiving 100 units of deposit, 10% of that deposit has to be, to be as a required reserve, which is obligated by the central bank. It has to be in the central bank account. And we know that all the banking systems, they have an account with the central bank. Out of, Out of the, the remaining deposit, deposit which it is, is the excess reserve, reserve is, is going, going to be, be the asset for, for the banking, banking system. system. Because, because this excess, excess reserve, reserve is the reserve, reserve that enables the, the banking system, system to create loan out of it. So do remember that the reserves are the liability of the central bank, but they're going to be the asset of the banking system. So now that we are done with the liability side of the central bank, we move to asset side. So what are the assets of the central bank? Of course, the first asset is the securities. If you, if you remember, remember open, open market, market operation from, from your previous, previous modules, modules, you know, you know that, that one of the main tools uh, through which central bank is performing the monetary policy are the securities. So it means that they are buying or selling the securities. These securities are considered the asset for central bank. Apart from this, the central bank sometimes, sometimes they, they have, have the responsibility, responsibility to, to providing the reserve to the banking system. And that's why we call that the central bank is giving loans to the financial institution. These loans sometimes are called borrowed reserve. So it means that it's a kind of reserve that the banking system has borrowed from central bank. And of course, any time that the central bank wishes, they have to return this borrowed money to the central bank. So that's why this is considered the asset for the central bank. The rate at which the central bank is giving this loan to the banking system is called discount rate. So this is called the borrowed reserve. And it is the rate at which they provide this reserve is discount rate. One more point is that liability of the central bank, which are currency plus reserve, as are called high-powered money. or we call them monetary base, MB. So monetary base or high powered money are the liability side of the central bank. Then we remember that we say that through this reserve, this reserve are the amount that can be both deposited at the central bank and can be held by the banking system. So any change in this side, in the liability side of the monetary of the central bank, is going to affect the monetary base or money supply. So that's why if you want to know that whether the money supply in the society is going to decrease or increase, you should know that whether the currency in circulation is changing or the reserve is changing. Now let's um, do some examples that we're going to understand better. For example, we want to start from different policies of the central bank and we want to know that how these policies are going to affect the T account of the banking system and the T account of the central bank. The first example is saying that um, the Fed is performing an open market purchase. How it is performing, we say that we know that the open market purchase it means that Fed is buying the security from the banking system. So it means that once it is buying the security from the banking system, it means that it is giving the reserve to the banking system. So that's why we expect that the money supply is increasing and that's why it is easy monetary policy. And then um, uh, from the bank and then it pays a check to the banking system. This check is actually the amount of the reserve that the central bank is providing to the banking system. And the banking system deposit the check into the Fed account. So now we want to know that what is happening to the Fed T account. 
So we know that one side is the liability and the other side is asset. And since we have to do this for the banking system, I try to write it in a way that later on I can do for the banking system. So this side are liabilities and here are assets and the same is here. And then assets, okay. So here we know that the central bank has bought 100 million of bonds. So bonds are type of security, am I right? So if there are security, we know that the security or the asset part of the central bank. So that's why we write here, securities. Are the securities are increasing? Yes, they are increasing. How much? They are increasing 100 units. So it is positive 100. So what is happening then after the security is increasing? So it means that they are giving some reserve to the banking system and if you remember we were saying that the reserves are the liability of the Fed and they are the asset for the banking system. So here the reserves are increasing. So how much are they increasing? Of course with the amount of the purchase which is 100 it is, is again positive and this reserve is also positive 100 here so if i ask you that is money supply in the society is increasing or not what is the answer the answer is yes because here we discussed that the money supply or high powered money is c plus r since the reserve here has increased so it means that monetary base or money supply in the society is increasing by 100 unit one more point before we proceed is that the liability side of the central bank here is called m1 so you remember that previously we have discussed about m1 m1 in, in this language, in the language of the T accounts of the central bank is the liability side of the Federal Reserve account. And the asset side is M2. So whatever the components of our this side is the asset side. So overall, how much the securities have, has increased? The security, it has increased 100 units in the Federal Reserve account. Then how about the securities of the banking system? The banking system, they have sold the security to the central bank. So that's why the securities here are minus 100. Has the amount of the security changed in the society? Of course not. The security from banking system has been transferred to the Federal Reserve, but the amount of the security is remaining the same. How about the reserve? we can see that the amount of the reserve has increased. So that's why the monetary base is increasing. Okay, our next example is saying that the Federal Reserve buys 100 bonds from the corporation and pays them with a check. The corporation is depositing the check into the bank account and the bank depositing this check into the account with Federal Reserve. So in this example, uh, we have to discuss about the T account of three players in this example. First is the Fed, then it is corporation, and the second is the bank. So we can start with the Fed account. For example, we can start with Fed. This is making a lot of noise. Then I start with liabilities and then assets. So the Fed is buying the security from the corporation. Once it is buying the security, so it means that the securities are increasing by 
100 units. And then since it is paying to the corporation, we check. So it means that the amount of reserve is going to increase by 100 units. So do remember that in the liability side, we have only currency and reserve. Since it is paying with check, so it means that no currency is involved. So that's why the amount of reserve is increasing 100 units. So if I ask the question here that is there any change in money supply? Yes, the answer is yes, because this side, the liability side of Federal Reserve is the money supply. And since there is a 100 unit ex uh, increase in reserve, so it means that MB or monetary base is increasing by 100 units. Then what is happening uh, to the corporation? Uh, corporation T account. So again, we have liabilities here and we have assets. So the corporation has sold the security to the Federal Reserve. So it means that the security that they have in the assets of the corporation, now they have reduced by 100 units. And then in return, what they have re received they have received a check. So check is a kind of asset for the corporation. So the check deposit has increased. So it is 100 unit. So is there any change in asset of the corporation? No, because only the shape of the asset of the corporation has changed. What corporation has done? Corporation has deposited this check into the banking account. So that's why we have to discuss about the banking system as well. So here is banking system. So now let's see that this change either is affecting the liability side of the banking system or the asset side. Uh, here, check deposit is being deposited in the banking system. Do you think that the check deposit is the asset for the banking system or is the liability of the banking system? Of course, check deposit is the liability of the banking system. Why? Because each time this corporation, they have deposited the check into the account. Each time they need money, they can request for the money instead of this deposit that they have put in the bank. So that's why it is liability of the banking system, but it is asset for the corporation. So the check deposit has increased by 100 units. So in return, so instead of this liability, what it has increased as the asset of the banking system. So do you remember that whatever is the reserve as a liability of the central bank is the asset for banking system. So here the reserve has increased by 100 units. So if I asked you that, what has happened in this example? In this example, you say that the assets of the corporation, they have changed the shape, but there is no change in the quantity of the asset. The reserve of the banking system is increasing, is increasing by 100 units. So overall, we can say that the reserve in this economy has increased by 100 units, and therefore the monetary base also has increased for 100 units. Okay, so what did we discuss in the video so far? Let me, before I continue, let me check with you that whether you hear my voice. So how is my audio? Okay, so you can hear my voice, right? Okay, what we discuss just now, we discuss about different components of T account of the Federal Reserve. We discuss about the asset and liability. So I show you in this slide the parts that we have discussed. So what is very important is this. This part is very important. This is monetary base, right? 
So monetary base is actually what normally we is known for us as money supply. And the reason that we were assuming that money supply is fixed because we were just assuming that money supply is just the currency in circulation. So that's why we were just assuming that it is fixed. Now you can see that one more important component has come in, which is the reserve. And then today you can see that this reserve is changing. And without the control of the uh, Federal Reserve, it is changing due to the activities of the banking system. So this part, do remember that this is monetary base, this is money supply. And this part, this liability so side of the Federal Reserve T account is M1 as well. So that's why whenever you want to answer any question regarding the change of monetary base, the change of money supply, or the change of M1, so you have to look that whether there is any change in the liability side of the central bank or not. Then, this part, the asset side, which you can see, it's about the securities and about the loans to financial institutions. So just to give you a very brief explanation is that you can see that loans to financial institutions. Security, once we are talking about the security, it is referring to open market operation. So the sale or trade, purchase of the bond. So that's, that's open market operation which increases or decreases the amount of the security in the Federal Reserve T account. But loans to financial institution which is something which is not in control of Central Bank or Fed. Why? Because it depends on the banking system that whether they need some reserve and they have to get loan from Federal Reserve or they don't need. So that's why this loan is something which is not in control of Federal Reserve. So here we have explained about the same thing that asset, this side is asset. So this is what is shaping the M2. So that's why M1 and M2, once you want to see that whether it is any change or not, you have to follow the amount of the securities. And for this side, you have to follow the amount of reserve. Then this is the part that we discussed about high powered money that was liability side. So that's why we call it MB, monetary base, or high powered money, which is currency in circulation plus the reserve, the total reserve of the banking system. So do remember this phrase that the currency is as a leakage. So later on, we'll get back to this because we want to show you that this reserve, which is the main component of the monetary base, is making money to be multiplied. However, the amount of the currency in circulation will remain the same. So that's why in this topic, we want to discuss that actually holding the money in form of cash it's a kind of leakage from the banking system and that's one thing that we don't advise. So that's why normally we prefer to deposit our money in the banking system. Not today, we're gonna, you're gonna see the reason. And that's why normally currency is known as being a leakage into the system. Then this is about the example that we discussed. So what I want you to see is that I want here to show you that Whatever we used to discuss during the macro, what we used to say? We used to say that easy monetary policy, it means that the central bank is injecting the money in the society, is equal to open market purchase. It means that Fed is purchasing the bond from public. So now, you can see that how the money supply is going to increase. So here we show you that Federal Reserve due to this open market purchase, you can see that the amount of the reserve has increased. So this increase in reserve, right? So it shows that the money supply or monetary base is increasing. So that's the reason that we always say that open market operation is equal to increasing money supply because the amount of the reserve is increasing. Is there any change in currency? No. So that's why do remember that whenever we are talking about monetary policy necessarily doesn't mean that the central bank is issuing or is printing money. So those of you who have watched money heist, in the money heist, whatever they were doing, they were increasing the currency because they were printing the money. So what 
Increase in money supply necessarily doesn't mean increasing currency. That's why this example is showing you that although the currency in circulation has remained, remained the same, but monetary base or money supply has increased 400 units, and this increase is only due to increase in reserve. So the next example, is show you again that what has happened here, again it is showing you that this is money again open market purchase, but of course the process of open market purchase in this example has been different from the other example, uh, but what is the result? The result that you can see that the reserve has increased. And then again, we know that the increase in reserve is equal to increase in money supply, monetary base. Then, here. What is the difference between this example and the previous example is that this time, the person or the corporation is selling bond and they are receiving cash. So they are cashing the amount that they receive. So now I want to show you that what will happen once we cash the amount. Okay, we cash the amount in the liability side of the Federal Reserve. You can see that the currency in circulation has increased. Previously, what was increasing here, it was reserve. And this amount of reserve, if you remember, in the banking system was increasing the amount of the reserve as well. So now here, monetary base has increased. So it means that in terms of increase in money supply, so both of these operations is increasing the money supply. But in terms of the process, this way increasing in money supply is only increasing the currency in circulation. What is, why, what is the reason that it is currency in circulation? Because the person who has bought this bond and the person, the corporation which is selling this bond requires cash. So once this corporation or this person wants to hold cash, that's why I told you that cash is a kind of leakage from the system. Why? Because there is no reserve and this reserve is not getting back to the financial system. So that's why the amount of the reserve is unchanged. So now you can see both is the same way of open market purchase or monetary policy both of them, in one of them, the reserve is increasing. In another one, the currency in circulation is increasing. In both ways, the money supply is increasing. However, once we are cashing the amount, so it means that the reserve has come out of the system. There is no more reserve. And since the amount of the reserve is remaining the chain, so means that banking system has no more assets. So the asset side of the banking system is decreasing. You remember that we say that reserve of the Federal Reserve, which reserve, which is the liability side of the Federal Reserve, is asset for the banking system. Since the reserve are unchanged, so it means that the banking system is not experiencing any increase in asset. So the result is the same, but the effects are different. Now, the summary. Here is a summary of what, is, what we discussed, that we want to discuss about the effect of open market purchase. So reserve, we want to know that whether the reserve is increasing or decreasing. It depends, we cannot say. That depends that whether the seller of the bond, how he wants to keep, how he wants to receive this money. Okay, so whether they need currency or they need deposit. If they need currency, it means that they are increasing the currency circulation and there will be no change in the reserve. But if they want a deposit, so they will increase the reserve of the banking system and both M1 and M2 grows. And we know that in both of them, in either way, anyway, the high powered money or monetary base is increasing. And that's why we always say that open market purchase is equal to increase in money supply. So that is the first example. Then we continue to open market sales so we can watch the next video. Let's go to the video number three. Our other example on um, money supply process 
is the situation that Fed buys a uh, hundred of bonds from a corporation and pays check to the corporation, but this time the corporation is not depositing the check in a banking system and is directly cashing the check. So it means that the corporation or the firm. The Guys, I stopped the video because I thought that I, I show you this video, right? So I have to go for the video of um, open market sale, okay? So just hold on whether I can see that I find the video or not, okay? Hold on. Now let's see that whether it is a forged video or not. Or... Other example is about open market sale. So the example is saying that Fed is selling 100 units of bonds to corporation and corporation pays with the currency. So do remember that this time Fed is selling the bonds. So it means that again, we have to draw the T account for both Fed and banking system sorry this time is corporation so here is corporation here is liability and here is assets again here is fit again liability and assets so one by one we read and then we fill so it's saying that Fed is selling 100 units of bonds. So it means that bonds are the security, which is the asset. So it means that security, but since Fed is selling them, so it means that the amount of the security is decreasing 100 units. Who is buying these securities? The corporation is buying. So corporation is receiving this security. So the asset of corporation is increasing by 100 units. And then the corporation is paying with currency. So it means that the currency of the corporation is decreasing by 100 units. Again here, there is no change in the assets of the corporation, only the type of the asset, they have been changed. But how about for the Fed? Since the amount of the asset is increasing, so it means that the currency in circulation is decreasing as well. So why it is decreasing? Why the liability is decreasing? Because the currency in circulation is the liability of the central bank. Now that the currency circulation has decreased and it has come towards the central bank, so it means that the liability of the central bank has decreased. So that's why the currency is also decreasing by 100 units. So now, what is happening to MB? So our monetary base. Here the monetary base is decreasing by the amount of um, the security, which is 100 units. What is happening to the reserve? The reserves are unchanged. So it means that this kind of um, process, increase, decrease in money supply, has no effect on the reserve and is not increasing or decreasing the uh, loaning ability of, this, of the banking system. Then we move to the another example is saying that Fed is selling 100 units of bond to the bank and the, ba the Fed debits the bank account with Fed. So it means that once it is selling, instead of the change in currency, this time the Fed is changing the reserve. So we want to show that what is happening to the bank and the Fed account. This again is making a lot of noise, so I change them. All of them seems the same. <laughs> Fed. Maybe I have to hold them in a way that they don't make noise. Let's see. Ah, yeah. Anyway. So, okay, please help. 
that the Fed is selling 100 units, so it means that the securities are decreasing, right? So minus 100. And uh, how about in the banking system? In the banking system, bank is buying, so it means that the security are increasing in the banking system by 100 units. Then what is happening uh, that the Fed is debiting the account of the bank with Fed. So it means that this time the reserve is going to be affected. So what is happening to the reserve here? Is reserve is increasing or decreasing since the security here has decreased and the bank is debiting, the Fed is debiting the bank account. So it means that the, bad is, the Fed is decreasing its own liability. So that's why the amount of reserve is also decreasing by 100 units. If you remember, we said that the reserve of the Federal, which is the liability of the Federal, is always the asset of the banking system. So that's why the reserve of the banking system is also decreasing by hundred units. Here what is happening to MB? Again since the liability side of the banking system is decreasing so again the MB here is decreasing by hundred units. And then what is happening to the reserve? Is any change in reserve? Yes. Unlike the previous scenario that there was no change in reserve here the reserve amount is also decreasing. The reserve amount is decreasing. Then we move to another example. The other example is shift from deposit to the currency. So let's say that it's a festival season and the public they require more cash. So that's why they instead of having the, some money in the account, they prefer to have some cash. So for the bank, this uh, more demand in the currency for the banking system, it means that it's going to be a leakage, right? Because the currency is coming out of the banking system and there will be less deposit for the banking system. For Fed, there's going to be no change because only one type of the liability will be changed to another type of liability. So now let's discuss that what is happening in this situation for the uh, people. T account and for the bank and for the Federal Reserve. So this scenario we have to uh, draw three, one, two, and then three. For example, we can start with Fed and then Here, for example, is the bank, and here we call it public. Right. So what is happening? Public, instead of having deposit, they have changed it to currency. So let's put the leap for all of them, and then the assets for all of them. Okay, for the public, so it means that they want more currency. So it means that the currency here is increasing. And for example, it can be any amount. Again, I assume that this amount of the currency, for example, is equal to 100. So it means that the currency is equal, is increasing by 100 units. And what has decreased? The checking account the checking account has decreased by 100 units. So this is the asset side of the public. Since the checking account is decreasing, so what is happening in the reserve, in the uh, T account of the banking system? We know that this checking, which is the asset of the public, this checking account is the liability of the banking system. So that's why the checking account of the banking system is also decreasing by 100 units. But at the same time, once the checking account is decreasing, the reserve of the banking system is also decreasing. 
to make sure that we are doing the right thing and the reserve of the banking system is decreasing so we know that the reserve of the banking system is the liability of the federal reserve so that's why you have to make sure that here the reserve is also decreasing 400 units is that correct yes because in the t account of the federal reserve the reserve are decreasing 400 unit and the currency is decreasing is increasing 400 unit so that's why in this scenario we can see that there is no change of mb monetary base is the same because there is 100 units of decrease 100 unit of increase and the monetary base is only the liability side of federal reserve is going to remain the same what is happening to the reserve the reserve is going to decrease by 100 units so once the reserve are decreasing so it means that the checking account of the bank is decreasing so it means that they have less ability to give it as a loan so what is happening to the m2 is there any change in m2 yes because we remember that we were saying that m2 is whatever happening in the assets of the banking system and since the reserve which are the assets of the banking system are decreasing so that's why we can see that MB monetary base is fixed but the M2 is decreasing okay uh, so we saw in the video about the open market sale so I'm gonna very quickly I'm gonna show you here in your slides that open market sale we remember from previous modules that it was the tight monetary policy and what normally we expect in the tight monetary policy we expect that the money supply is decreasing so how we show the decrease in money supply you can see that here the currency because um, the question for example in this example the example say that cooperation pays with the currency so since the corporation is dealing with the currency, so that's why in the liability side of the Fed account, so we are dealing with the currency, and of course, the liability of the Fed is decreasing. So this decrease is actually equal to decrease in money supply. Do we see any change in the reserve? Of course not. So in this scenario, the reserve of the banking system is not affected. Then we go to the next example. So again, it's a tight monetary policy, but this time, instead of dealing with the, current, uh, with the currency, we are dealing with reserve. So that it means that the Fed is selling 100 units of bonds to a bank, and the Fed is debiting the bank account. So since it is debiting the bank account, it's not dealing with any currency, so it means that liability side is changing. So the Fed amount of the security is decreasing and at the same time the liability of the Fed is decreasing. So this decrease in liability, how it is reflected in the banking system. Of course the banking system has bought the security. So that's why the amount of the security of the banking system has increased. So how about the reserve? Of course the reserve of the banking system has decreased. So it means that it is a change in the shape of the asset of the banking system. But now, if we want to compare these two, so what is the conclusion? For both of them, we know that the monetary base has reduced 400 units. So that's why it confirms that no matter of how the monetary policy is, is implemented, whenever we are talking about a tight monetary policy, we expect that the high-powered money is decreasing. However, the change in the reserve it depends that how the monetary policy has been implemented. So if the monetary policy with, uh, for the implementation of the monetary policy, the Fed is dealing with a bank's account, so that's where the reserve is coming. Or if the situation is that the monetary policy is conducted through dealing with a cash amount, then it is the situation that the reserve is remaining on. So I hope that by now you get to know that I'm focusing too much on reserve. Every time I'm saying that, okay, reserve has increased, reserve has decreased. So why am I doing that? So I have to explain for you that the loaning ability of every banking system is coming from the amount of the reserve. So that's why this reserve is very important. 
That's why we try that even if once we want to implement the monetary policy. So we want to play with the amount of the reserve because if you are playing with the amount of the cash, it has no effect on the loaning ability of the banking system. What is the main role of the banking system is that it receives the deposits from us and then it has to give it to the bar to the investor, the people who need this money for investment to the borrowers. So that's why it is very important that this loaning ability it remains strong. So if we want to deal with cash, so it means that it is leakage from the system and it won't affect the reserve. So now one more question is that, okay, I accept that reserve is equal to the amount that the banking system can give as a loan. So it is very simple, it is very understandable that if banking system has 100 units as reserve so how much is the amount of the loan that they can give so always the amount of the loan that they can give is equal to the amount of the reserve right so of course the banking system cannot give more than the amount that they have as a reserve now again i come back to this and here it is showing you that it shows the shift uh, from deposit to the currency so now again, what you have understood from here is that once um, this example is showing you that once people demand is changing, for example, sometimes they prefer to keep deposit, sometimes they prefer to keep currency. Or for example, let's say that the situation that the, the economy is dealing with a lot of digitalization. So this digitalization is helping the society that they don't need much currency, much cash in hand and they are dealing, for example, with a debit card. So that's why it helps the reserve to remain in the banking system. So now you can see that in this situation, once the, de um, the deposit is remaining in the banking system, you can see that liability side of the banking system is, showing, is not showing any change, right? So that's why it remains the same. But this change in attitude of the people is affecting the reserve of the banking system. So it means that in this example, we have shown that the demand of the people has changed from deposit to the currency. So it means that from something deposit, just imagine that deposit, something useful for the banking system. Do remember in that way. So the demand of the people, the uh, attitude of the people has changed from something which is useful for the banking system which is some to the something which is leakage for the banking system. So that's why the amount of the reserve has decreased. So but now in our society that you know everywhere we want to go, we go with our card. So that's why normally our attitude is towards using with our deposit rather than the currency. So that's why we are actually helping the amount of the reserve of the banking system to remain more. Now, again, I'll get back to it with one more example. So now I continue with um, another example that another example, again, I want to show you that how the monetary base is increasing. So, so far, whatever I was discussing was only about open market operation that we discussed in two ways, open market sale, open market purchase. And I show you with various examples that even in the monetary policy, it is very important that how we are implementing it because we try to keep the amount of the reserve, which is a good source for the loaning for the banking system. And through the last example, I show you that the currency is decreasing the reserve of the banking system. Now, put aside the open market operations, so we are coming back to the loans to financial institution. So it is the scenario, it is a situation that we want a steal. Still, we are talking about the Federal Reserve T account, right? You remember that in the Federal Reserve T account, once we were discussing about the liability, it was reserve and currency. But in the asset side, we had securities and we had loan to the banking institution. You remember the first video we discussed about it. So once we are talking about security, if here is a security, it means open market operation. Now here is loan. So it means that it is a situation that the monetary policy is not implemented through open market purchase. It is another one. And it is the loaning to the banking system. So what do we expect? Again, once it is loaning to the banking system, does it have the same role, the same impact of the open market operation? So let's see that 
The banking system, they need money, so that's why Federal Reserve, normally we call it lender of last, lender of last resort. So it means that it is the father, that whenever you need money, you have to refer to the father. So if you need money, okay, you can get loan from the uh, Federal Reserve. So Federal Reserve here is giving you loan, 100 units. So once it is giving you loan, so it means that this loan is going to the banking system, right? So of course, once the Fed is giving loans, so it means that the reserve of the banking system is increasing because we know that whenever any kind of money in terms of the currency or in terms of reserve is coming to the banking institution, it is increasing the liability of the Fed. We know that because Fed is always liable to pay this amount or to change this amount for us. So that's why, again, the loan has been given to the banking system, so that means that the liability of the, of the Federal Reserve is increasing. So we show it. Then what will happen to the banking system? You look. Of course, the reserve of the bank is increasing because they have received loan. It's very fine. But at the same time, you, we know that the liabilities is also increasing. Why? Because they are borrowing from Fed. So now it means that, yes, at the same time, now they have some money. So the money is the reserve that they can give loan. At the same time, they have got loan themselves. So it means that they can create kind of assets for themselves, but they are liable as well. So that's why now we want to judge what has happened to the reserve. So do you see the increase in reserve? Of course. So the reserve has increased here. So that's why we say that the reserve has increased. So that's why the loaning ability has increased. Fine. How about the monetary base? Monetary base is this side. So monetary base also has increased. So question. Does it have the same impact as open market purchase? We say yes. So the impact is the same because the final impact is the increase in monetary base that you can see monetary base has increased. But this time we are sure that the reserve is increasing. In monetary policy, we are not sure. It depends. That's how monetary policy is implemented, right? But in this scenario, we know that the reserve has increased. So it is a loaning to the banking system. Do remember that even the Fed is not giving loan for free. So that's why the banking system has to pay the interest. The interest that the banking system is paying to the Fed is called discount rate. Discount rate. So this discount rate from today onwards, we're going to deal with it in different policies. We want to know that what is exactly the discount rate. So anyway. So this loan to the financial system. Now, one thing I want you to notice that you can see that the reserve is created. You can see that how fast and how easy money, money supply has increased. So this is what we call it money creation. So very simple, with one increase in reserve, money is created. That is the creation of money. So now the overview. I want to summarize whatever we have said this tool. We have told, we have discussed till now. We want to discuss about monetary base, right? So we wanted to know that how monetary base can change, for example, can increase. So the first one was open market operation. It is fully in control of Fed. Whenever Fed wants, they can sell the securities or they can buy the securities. So that's why it is fully in control of the Fed. And that's what we call it monetary base N. N means non-borrowed. So it means that open market purchase in the banking language is called MBN. Monetary base non-borrowed. Means that this is not a borrowing because we have another one which is loan to the financial system and that is the complete borrowing, right? So that's why we want to discuss about the features of the monetary policy. We say that monetary policy has two features. So the first one is non-borrowed monetary base, which is exactly is open market operation. So open market operation means that we don't deal with any loaning, any borrowing, just we deal with the security. So that's why in this MBN, the amount of the securities are changing, whether they are increasing or decreasing. The second component is BR. So BR is the situation that the banking system is getting loan from Fed. So is it, is, is it in control of Fed? 
is not in control of Fed. Why it is not? Because of course the Fed doesn't know that when banking system they need money, right? So sometimes, for example, they need money, they refer to the Fed. Sometimes they don't need money, they don't refer to the Fed. So that's why this loan, this borrowing from the Fed is not in control of Federal Reserve. So that's why you can see that MBN is controllable by Fed, but BR borrowed reserve are not in control of Fed. And this is just the kind of loan that in case that the banking system required, the Fed is providing to them. Now, I give you one small break. So let's get back to our chat. If you have anything, so I take a break and then I continue. So my friends, are you fine? Any point, anything you want to say? Is that all clear so far? My friends, are you fine? Are you okay? Okay, no comment. All fine. Okay. Let's continue. Now we want to discuss that how this reserve that just now we discuss about it and then I emphasize about the importance of the reserve. So now how reserve is create is uh, contributing in the multiple deposit creation. So it means that we want in simple words we want to show you that how this reserve is creating more and more money. Do you remember the multiplier effect in your macro that we were saying that what was the multiplier effect? It's a very similar concept that we were saying that um, if, for example, government is implementing any policy and they are, for example, building some kind of infrastructure, and the whole amount of the investment is 100 units, for example, 100 million. But the amount, the effect on the economy will be, for example, 10 times more. And it will be instead of 100, it will be 1,000 units of increase in the GDP of the country. So that was the multiplier effect. So the same thing we want to discuss here, that we want to say that the amount of the reserve, if single increase in reserve, the total creation of the money supply will be more. So that's why we are saying that with our amount of the reserve, how this money can be created more and more. So that is the multiple deposit creation. First, we start with a simple example, which is a single bank. So now let's continue with the example. He's saying that Fed buys 100 million of the bond from a bank. And then assume that bank does not want to help hold the excess reserve and lends out this 100 million to the borrowers uh, and the creditors deposit uh, account of the borrower. Okay, what is saying that in very simple word? In very simple word is saying that Fed has, yeah, Fed has bought the bond from the banking system. So if you want to show it in the bank, T account how you show it. So here we are just 
dealing with a bank account so we have shown the third so now the focus is only on the bank because we want to focus on the reserve now so fed has bought the bond so it means that the amount of the security in the banking system has decreased so you can see that the amount of the security has decreased 400 units and then of course the fed has given this amount of 100 as a check they have given it to the bank so that's why the amount of the reserve in the banking system has increased 100 units now 100 units they have as a reserve so what they want to do with these 100 units of course bank wants to make money out of these 100 units how can bank make money bank can make money only when they give it as a loan because they are they are able to make some interest out of that loan so that's why this bank intends to give this reserve as a loan. So this is the situation that, again, two more components are adding up in the T account. So let's see. Loan and checkable deposit. What is the checkable deposit? Of course, this is the account of this borrower with this bank. Because once bank, they want to give them money, give them loan, it deposit that loan in their account. So when, for example, once you want to go and buy, um, for example, get mortgage from the bank and you want to buy a house, bank is not giving you any cash or anything. Bank is transferring that money to your account. So that account is a checkable deposit because you can withdraw it with check. So this is the same thing here that that loan is the asset for the banking system. Do remember, any loan is the asset for the bank. Even if that loan is coming from Fed to the banking system, that loan is the asset for Fed. Now here, again, loan. Loan is going from the bank to the public. Again, loan is the asset for the banking system. So that's why you can see that it's a loan here. So loan has increased. Checkable deposit has increased, of course. But this, do remember that this checkable deposit is liability of the bank. When, one, when we say that it's liability, what does it mean? means that there is possibility that this person wants to withdraw the money. So that's why this bank has to be very careful that the amount of their reserve is 100. So they cannot give loan more than this 100 because it is possible that this person wants to withdraw this money, wants to cash this amount. So that's why they should have the reserve. They can, it cannot be more than that. So now, very simple. You can see the amount, this amount of the loan and this amount of the checkable deposit. So again, you can see that the bank very simply has created money. What is this money? This amount of the loan that they are giving. This checkable deposit is simply, again, money. So that's why they have created money again. Now, let's see. Now what will happen? That this person that they receive, that person who received loan, that 100 units, now this person wants to buy goods and services and he said that, okay, I want my money. So now that the person wants the money, so it means that the checkable deposit that is a liability of the bank, right, previously was positive and bank was liable. Now it is negative. So it means that that person wants the money. So that's why the person has taken this money out. What will happen? The amount of the reserve will be negative and the amount of the checkable deposit will be negative too. So if I want to show you the final T account of the bank, what will be? Here you can see that here is one negative 100. Look at the previous one. Previous account was here. Reserve was positive. So that's why they will cancel each other. Right? So again, go to the next one. Checkable deposit. Previously was positive 100. Now it is negative 100. So that's why they will cancel each other. So what will remain? The remaining is that the security is minus 100 and the loan is positive 100. So that is the total T account of the Fed. Uh, sorry, of this bank. Well, what is the lesson? The lesson is that any time the checkable deposit which is positive can be negative. So that's why bank has to be very careful 
that the amount that they can give as a checkable deposit cannot be more than this amount of the reserve, right? So whatever is the amount of the reserve, they can give it as a checkable deposit. That's the first lesson. Then, another lesson is that this 100, this 100 amount of the reserve, right, has come, let's say that from the open market operation, right, that for example, the, they have done any kind of open market operation, they have sold the security and they received this amount of the reserve, okay? So now, bank normally has to keep some amount of the reserve as the security for themselves and they can give the rest of it as a loan. So that's why now we want to tell that this amount of the reserve has two components. So one type of the reserve is required reserve and the other one is excess reserve. Required reserve is the amount that the central bank is dictating to the banking system that you have to keep with you. If you have 100 units of reserve, you cannot give this 100 units. You have to keep some amount with you as a security. So that's what we say that the amount of the reserve is required reserve and excess reserve. Now, if I ask you that how much is the total amount that the banking system is able to give as a loan, you won't say total reserve. You say that bank is able to give the amount which is the excess reserve because we know that the required reserve has to be assigned for the um, security purpose and this is dictated, instructed by Fed. For all of the countries all around the world, it's the same. Just the ratio is different. For some country, Fed is saying that you have to keep 10%. For some other country, they say that you have to keep 20%. So it depends that how much, based on the different economy, they just check that how much is the reference of the people, individuals, to get to the banking system to withdraw their money. So if this reference is more, referral is more, so that's why they keep this required reserve higher. But normally, in many countries, it is around 10%. Now, based on what I explained now, we want to see that what is happening here. There was, so we were saying a story, right? So the story was that the open market operation happened, the banking system earned 100 units of reserve, and then they gave this 100 unit of reserve, they gained this 100 unit of reserve, and they make it as a checkable deposit, right? Because they want to give it as a loan. Then in the story, we added that. We, what we added? We added that this person, the person got loan, and this person wanted to deposit, for example, take out that loan, and then wanted to deposit in another bank. So it is very simple. You just assume that you get one loan from May bank, and then you want to deposit the amount of the loan that you get in the same bank. So that's why you get a check, and then you deposit your check in the next account, in the next bank. So that's why, so previous example, we were saying that it is, for example, banking system. Now I'm specifically mentioning the name of the bank. Now I'm saying that, okay, we are in bank A. So the bank A is not a bank that has given loan, right? So previous bank, you see the slide, previous slide? Yeah, it was the first national bank. So the first national bank gave a loan. So this person, for example, got the loan and this person then got a check and now the person is depositing this amount of the loan in the next bank, which I call it bank A. So now what will happen to the bank A? Bank A is very happy, why? Because bank A has a good customer that the customer is bringing the reserve. So the amount of the reserve of this bank is increasing for 100 units. And of course, whenever the bank has any reserve, we know that the amount of the checkable deposit is increasing, which is a liability of the bank. Why liability? Because as I said, this person, anytime, maybe once the check, we want to go to another bank or we want to buy something else. So that's why do remember that the checkable deposit always remains as a liability. 
So now this bank, bank A has a reserve amount. So bank is very happy. Why? Because the bank wants to make money out of this 100 unit. How to make money? Again, they want to give it as a loan to the next person. So how much they can give loan? Now be careful that the bank has a required reserve ratio of 10%. So once I'm saying that reserve ratio means that I'm talking about the percentage. Ratio means percentage. If I'm talking about required reserve amount means that 100 multiplied by 10%, which is, for example, 9 units. Uh, sorry, 100 by 10%, which is 10 units. So do remember, required reserve ratio is the percentage. This percentage is coming from Fed. So required reserve ratio, ratio is 10%. So it means that the amount of the reserve that they have is 100. So 10% of this 100 is 10. So that's why 10 has to remain in the bank. So the amount of the reserve in the bank is now 10. So what will happen to the extra 900? Extra 900 wants to be as a loan. So that's why it becomes a loan to this person. So again, the loan is 90%. And the amount of the checkable deposit is remaining the same. Because this checkable deposit is yet the same, right? This person has deposited. So this is the amount of the checkable deposit. The only, oh my God. Guys, hold on a minute. My laptop is running out of battery. Hold on. The checkable deposit is the same, right? Because this person has brought the money. So the whole money is for this person. What bank has done has changed the shape of the asset that they have. So keep 10% of it as a required reserve and then 9% as an excess reserve, 90%. This 90% is excess reserve, is a loan. So now loan, what will happen? Let's go. This 90 units, The person has received a loan. What the person is doing, for example, person A has received a loan, is bringing it to bank B. So 90 units they have received as a loan, this 90 units, this person is depositing in the bank B. So what will happen? That they have deposit, 90 units of reserve is going to increase as the asset of bank B, and the liability is checkable deposit equal to that 90 units. Now, this, first, this bank is again very happy. So, 90 is the reserve. 10% has to go for reserve ratio. So, 10% of 90 is equal to 9. And the remaining is the amount that this bank wants to give as a loan. So, 81. So, total amount of the checkable deposit is remaining as 90. So, now you can see that again the amount of the Loan is equal to amount of the excess reserve. So can this process continue? Again, this process can continue that this person is receiving these 81 units and these 81 units can go to be deposited in the next bank and again 10% of it will be aside and the remaining will be excess reserve. And this excess reserve is actually the loaning ability of the next bank. So are they increasing M1? Of course, they are increasing. We know that the amount of the reserve, whenever the amount of the reserve here is increasing, we know that the reserve is actually the liability side of the Fed as well. So whenever you see that the reserve here is increasing, means that M1 is increasing. Right? At the same time, we say that whenever the reserve of the banking system is increasing, so M2 is increasing as well. So that's why money supply is increasing. And more and more deposit is created. You can see that how much amount of the deposit is increasing. So, so many amount of the deposit. And imagine that this continues, this process continues. So you can see that whatever we discuss is here that once we started from the first bank, of course, the first bank, the amount of the deposit was zero. It was not any deposit, right? And it was only 
the amount of the loan that the first bank has the ability of giving that loan. Then that amount of the loan came to the first bank. The first bank has to keep 10% of it and then has to give 90% as a loan. And this, pro this process continues until we reach that the total amount of the increase in deposit is becoming 1,000. And the increase in loan, the loaning ability is 1,000. So how much is the increase in reserve? The reserve, of course, is 100, of course. Why? We don't expect because the amount of the reserve that we started with was this 100. So now we reach to our formula. The formula for the change in total deposit in the system. You can see, do you remember the multiplier? Do you remember, don't you feel that it is something like this? That one over required reserve. What was this required reserve? The amount that is dictated by the central bank that they have to give as a security return. So required one over required reserve multiplied by the change in the reserve. Change in the reserve. How much was in our example? The change in the reserve was 100 because we started with increases 100 units of deposit. And then you can see that the total change in deposit is equal to 100 units of reserve, sorry. And the total change in deposit is becoming 1,000. So that was very simple example, of course. Now, this is exactly simple multiplier. What is multiplying? This is multiplying the amount of the reserve in the banking system. That's why I said to you in the earlier that it is very important that we should deal with reserve rather than currency. And that's why I said that currency is a leakage from the system. Do you see any currency here? Now, I want to bring currency here because in the banking system, in the real world, we are dealing with the currency as well. So I want to know that whether currency is having any impact on multiplier or not. What is your guess? To me, um, currency has impact yes but it will decrease the, the effect of multiplier because currency is a leakage right so whatever this this one over r r wants to be effective multiplier is taking some of this effect out of it it has negative impact of it is decreasing the amount of the multiplier so now let's see that whether it is correct or not of course we have some critics towards the simple model of course we know uh, that the simple model was very much simple so that's why we know that all these depositors they have some currency to hold so that's why we cannot say that we can always use the simple model and that's why we have to move on to our multiplier complex model so now this is the complex model so what we have done here so actually what is this this is saying that M is money supply, M is our multiplier, and MB is monetary base. Monetary base, do you remember? It was uh, currency and reserve, of course. So this amount of the reserve, whatever is, for example, was 100 units, with the, um, with the effect of multiplier can be more once it comes to currency, money supply. So that's why the amount of the money supply in the society can be much more than the monetary base. So my friends do remember money supply now is different than monetary base. Whenever we are talking about the change in reserve or currency, we are talking about the change in monetary base. But necessarily the amount of the monetary base, the increase in monetary base is not equal to the amount of the money supply. Because the effect of the employer is there, multiplier is there. Now we want to show you that what is the multiplier. So one over our, our required reserve we had already had in our simple model. So what are the factors that we, we add? So we know that E, excess reserve. So it is the amount of the excess reserve desired by the bank, right? And the formula is that excess reserve over the total deposit so do remember that this e in this formula is a ratio the same is with small c is a ratio ratio of what 
ratio of the currency over total deposit because this total deposit necessarily all of it is not in shape of the reserve some of it in shape of the currency so that's why we have c small c is it a ratio currency ratio means that total amount of the currency over the total amount of the reserve and this small e is excess reserve over the total amount of the reserve so what is rr is the required reserve ratio this amount is dictated by the central bank and then what is this c this c is exactly the amount of excess reserve now you can see if you want to compare this formula with the previous simple formula what is the difference you know that we have two more components here once we add something in a denominator of a fraction so it means that the increase in denominator means that the whole fraction is decreasing so that's why i said you that in a real world due to the amount of the currency so the effect of the multiplier will be less so it means that you want to compare the simple model with the real model the multiplier effect is less is lower why because we have this these two in the denominator right so that increases that decreases this fraction then okay here is some of the examples that everything is given to you that you have to calculate for example the amount of the money multiplier but normally here you can see that the whole ratio is given to you if i want to give you i don't give you the ratio i give you for example the amount of the c and the amount of the d and maybe the amount of the er then i ask you to calculate you should calculate yourself you know that er is the excess reserve desired by the bank and then you know that c is the holding of the currency d is the checkable deposit um, rr is the required reserve ratio so you know that you can calculate the, um, this uh, ratios yourself c and e you can calculate yourself then okay so here you can see that the amount of the money multiplier for example mb has been 100 unit increase in reserve and then we calculate that the money multiplier was two point something and the total amount of the money supply is 260. so this kind of example we're going to practice together with in our tutorial question tutorial classes so now again we want to know that the changes in non-borrowed monetary base so non-borrowed monetary base was what non-borrowed was open market operation so can fed control on it of course the fed can control on it but you can see that the money supply the money supply is positively related to the non-borrowed monetary base you can see here that this non-borrowed monetary base and then this monetary base both of them they have positive impact you can see that the sign is here positive so that's why you can see that the change in non-borrowed monetary base money supply is positively related to the non-borrowed monetary base of course then it is saying that fed can control these parts of course because non-borrowed is the open market operation and the fed can control that changes in borrowed reserve from the fed the money supply is positively related to the level of the borrowed reserve br from the fed so it means that mb is positively related to the br as well how you can say that because br you take the br this side of the equation you can see that br and mb both of them they are affecting the monetary base right so you take br this side it will be positive side so that's why it is saying that the changes in borrowed reserve is positively related to monetary base and we, we know that this part is not much in control of federal reserve then it is talking about the factors affecting the money supply of course we know that we have discussed what are these factors these are the ratios that we are using currency in holding excess reserve and required reserve that we have discussed about all of them towards we are towards the end of our topic that we are showing the relationship between these variables with money supply so now even if i ask you i'm sure that you are able to explain 
if I ask you that, the relationship between non-borrowed monetary base with money supply. Non-borrowed monetary base was open market operation. Of course, they are positively related. So it means that once we increase the amount of um, open market operation, for example, non-borrowed monetary base, um, we are increasing the money supply. That's fine. Then the required reserve ratio. So we know that whenever we are increasing the required reserve ratio, so it means that we are decreasing the loaning ability of the banking system. So that's why we know that the amount of the reserve is decreasing. So that's why it is saying that the less multiple deposit expansion is correct because RR is in the denominator of in our fraction. So that's why once the amount of the RR is increasing, so it means that the multiple creation deposit is ability is less. So that's why the money supply is decreased. Borrowed reserve, just now we discussed that the more banking system they are borrowing from the Fed, they are able to give more loan, of course. So that's why they have more ability to create more deposit, more reserve. So that's why the money supply is increasing. Excess reserve. Excess reserve is the amount that the banking system is able to give loan, okay? But do remember that some of the banks, specifically during the crisis, they don't want to give the whole amount as a loan. And this excess reserve that just now we are using in the formula is the amount that the banking system desire to keep with him. They don't want to keep with it. They don't want to give it as a loan. So that's why if they are increasing this amount, that's why again the loaning ability and the deposit creation is going to decrease. Look at this formula. You see this E in the denominator. So once it is in denominator, it is it means that it is increasing this denominator and it means that it is decreasing this whole fraction. Increase in this, it is decreasing the whole fraction. Increase in this, what is this E? We say that the excess reserve ratio, what is this ER? Means that excess reserve desired by the bank. So it means that after they have some amount of the reserve, they put some of it as a reserve, required reserve. Okay, that's fine. They have to put for the central bank. Then they have some amount of the excess reserve. Out of this excess reserve, Sometimes the banking system want to keep some of it for themselves and they want to keep some of it as a loan. So that's why it depends that how much they want to keep in the bank out of this excess reserve. If they desire to keep the huge amount with them, so that's why they are decreasing this multiplier effect. And that's why in this slide it is saying that once you are decreasing, you are increasing the amount of the excess reserve, so the loaning ability is decreasing and the same way goes with our currency holding so once depositor they are wishing to increase to keep more currency it means that again it has negative effect on multiplier effect now see one thing the player if the player is the federal reserve what are the components the component is reserve ratio rr which is implemented by federal reserve and non-borrowed monetary base what is in control of bank borrowed reserve they know that how much they want to borrow of course and they know that how much do they want to keep with themselves so that's why excess reserve then what is in control of depositor in control of us only is one thing that whether we want to have the checkable deposit or we want to have currency that's all so this is what is in control of us and that is some examples and yeah we are done with today's topic. I hope that you are all learning well. And tell me that how are you? Are you feeling tired? Are you okay, my friends? Feel tired? Okay, I have only four questions in the quiz if you want. If you want to do the quiz, otherwise maybe I can... Um, I can maybe ask the quiz here or maybe I can post the quiz questions in the chat box. Do you want me to post the quiz questions? But it cannot be because it's multiple choice. So do you want to play quiz or you want to go? So it's up to you. Are you tired?
Okay, you want to play the quiz? Quiz, okay. So let's go for the quiz. Let me... Okay, do you see my Chrome? No. Okay, you have to join. Exhausted. Yeah, I can understand. <laughs> if you want to leave Caillou, you can leave. So quiz is only four questions. If you are tired, you can go. That's fine. So my friend, do you want to join? Oh, by the way, I will uh, mark here is my marking. You can see I'm marking your midterm. So nine, the rest they don't like to join us. <coughs> Eleven, shall we start? My friends, no more, no more demand.
Press shell. Don't be naughty. Do your work. Yeah, Nico Raj. Nico Raj. Oh my God, what is he saying? The quiz is very happy. Okay, thank you so much. I don't want. <laughs> okay, review the questions. So, the first 10 players are correct. It's saying that both are the Federal Reserve assets. So, Federal Reserve assets are the securities and loan to financial institutions. What was the Federal Reserve liabilities? It was currency in circulation and reserve then these okay great 12 percent 12 yeah, answer correctly i assume that these four people who didn't answer correctly wanted to do some joke with us reserves are required are equal to sum of of course required reserve and excess reserve the fed does not tightly control the monetary base because it does not completely control uh, yeah, borrowed reserve. So I kept emphasizing today that open market purchase, open market sale is all in control of Federal Reserve. It is, it is non-borrowed monetary base. What this borrowed reserve is the amount that the banking system wants to get loan from the Fed. So that's why Fed cannot control discount rate. It is the amount of the rate that the banking system has to give to the Fed. So this discount rate is instructed by FED. So that's why FED has full control over this discount rate. And the last question, if the required reserve ratio is equal to 10%, a single bank can increase its loan up to a maximum equal, of course, it is only excess reserve. So required um, reserve, required reserve has to be put aside before the bank can loan up their excess reserve. So that's why the total amount of the loan is equal to excess reserve. Okay, we are done for today. So any question, my friends? Anything you want to say about the class? So did you learn something? Anything you want to mention? Okay, shall we, shall we, okay then if you don't have anything to say, gradually I have to say bye bye and I see you on Thursday. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye, no problem, Shavi, no problem. I know that you were in the class. Okay, thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Have a good evening.